So when we practiced Tam Toy, it was originally just a single small combination of techniques repeated and then there's 12 different small combinations. Most old Kung Fu was that way. Forms didn't come about until quite late in Kung Fu development. So we have a salute that is a movement at the start that we do to show that we're beginning the, the form and also to open the energy system in a, in a particular way which we'll talk about later. We then have um, the first repetitions and that's called a road. We always refer to it in Tam Toy as a road and you repeat that as many times as you want and then you come to the end point which is there's a simple term which is basically just a punch and then you go back again with the second line and then you come and you do your punch and then you do the third line, the fourth line, the fifth line, the sixth line, etc. So the original way is there's three stages of development in your training of Tam Toy. The first is to hold each posture as a static movement. So for example, you'll be here, you'll hold it for 15, 20 seconds, you'll come back, you'll hold it 15, 20 seconds, you'll come back, you'll hold it 15, 20 seconds. That um, sets the proprioceptors, it strengthens the body, and it gets you used to not overextending and damaging your joints fundamentally. That's what that was for. It gives you the basic Kung Fu skill and it helps you stretch a little bit. Now, many people do Tam Toy perfectly well up to that stage. The second stage is where you try and go for continual flow. So first it's fixed step, then continual flow. At this stage, you want to try and get the maximum power in each movement from the waist. This is where a lot of very good practitioners fall down because an awful lot of people tend to come back and just use the arm here and just use the arm here and of course that isn't very good kung fu it's a bit like if you took mike tyson and you went for a short punch and you said right the start point is here the end point is here and then just practiced holding them and just step in between them without thinking about how the power is generated and the the sharp twist of the the waist so the first level is fundamentally setting the skeletal structure and the bones second level is sinews and fascia so at this level we're trying to maximize the, the power as it goes through the body so you could actually use it for combat and the third level is then to get internal twists and coils and release them so if the skeletal structure isn't in place correctly when we wind up round it it's a little bit like having a man made of matchsticks if you've got a model man made of matchsticks with elastic bands around it that's the fascia and the bones yeah the matchsticks are the bones the fascia and um, tendons are the elastic bands. Now if you wrap them in a particular way you should be able to release it and the matchstick man should fire but if the matchsticks weren't set right first that is the proprioceptors the joints weren't, aren't set correctly then all that, that will happen when you release the elastic bands is the matchsticks will snap or get damaged. So that's a bit like a lot of people don't set the skeletal structure correctly to begin with so they can't get the coils inside the body and release them properly. So at each point we're going to go through and explain how to get those coils correctly for each line. Now to begin with you might not feel those coils, that's fine. So the third level is to get that explosiveness. In old Indian martial arts that's called Tana um, and that may well be it's like a store and release power. A bit like when you do a yogic posture and you feel somewhere is pulled, that's a store to release and that might actually be the root of the word Tam Toy, Tan being the Chinese culturalization of Tana. Um, that's my own personal view on it. Um, so the third level is then to put those powers in. The same things happen with the choreography. The first level is to walk through all the lines 1 to 12 with a set number of repetitions forward and back with no change. The second level is to put them together in random order so you could go one three, six, two, four, or you could do odds up, evens down, one, twelve, two, eleven, three, ten. So you work it so it becomes instinctive to change between them. And then the final stage is to put the orders together. They move together in random orders, but keep it looking like a form in solo training. So this is very like shadow boxing. But the important thing is to keep the spirit and the mechanics of the original form intact. So it's not just suddenly taking a random kick and a random punch from Tam Toy and putting them together but it's keeping the correct flow, the correct powers, the correct internal force in order to maintain Tam Toy into free practice 
And that's the old way of practicing Tamtoy. You're working it through those sequences quite carefully. Of course, the other thing you need to do is practice with a training partner and practice the applications. We're going to go through the applications in a, in a little bit more of an academic way than I normally do, because I want people to understand the theory of long fist. Long fist is very brave. It tries to just strike the opponent. It's not aiming to bridge, and it's not aiming think, to bridge with the hands. So you're trying to use a curve to match a curve. In the attack, when those two curves meet, there's a line, and that line is where you can control your opponent. So if I'm trying to use a hook punch, I'm trying to do it along certain vectors through stepping. You need very good stepping to use northern long fist styles well. You're trying to use it along a vector that through stepping I can control his guard. I can bypass it ideally, but if his guard gets in the way, I know I'm at an angle that I can incorporate that into my striking pattern. And if his strike gets in my way, I've already predicted that and taken that into account in the game that I'm playing. So we'll show some applications with that in for you to take away and practice. Some people have two-person Tamtoy forms that you practice up and down. And they can be useful, but in general, I think they're more of a distraction from learning about fighting with Tamtoy than they are um, a good tool, simply because they're quite conceptual. And there's bits where you're trying to train sensitivity drills to leak through, bits where you're trying to train wrapping drills, bits where you're training direct applications, bits where you're training theoretical applications. And they seem to be so mixed and so convoluted now that it takes you more time explaining them than you could just teach a decent application and get people drilling it. Now, the other thing with Tamtoy, if you want to be good at it and use it as a complete style, take each move out separately and work the body mechanics and try and get it to work not in the line, but on its own. And take each piece of footwork where you step 45 degrees, where you step forward, backward, sideways, and put it with each technique. Train them on the bag. Train them live with an opponent. Train them as many ways as possible. Don't just walk up and down doing the form dead. After the first couple of months of training, that is a waste of time. You need to, you need to break it down, find out the characters in it, the ABCs, and then come up with your own words and own uses for it. That's the essential of it. Otherwise, it will just be a dead form and a dead dance that you do countless times, and it'll give you some health benefits, but not much else. So it's very important you approach all Chinese martial art with a very um, open sense of things like that, so that you're training it as a live fighting art and not just a, a dead ideal.